Glimps and Ms. Sharon Chuck to Fiona Lawton. And I will be giving a few minutes of my time to my colleague here, Deputy Margaret Murphy O'Mahony, who is the Fianna Fáil spokesperson on disability, who from a Fianna Fáil perspective will just wrap up from our end. Um, but I very much welcome the opportunity to speak on this issue tonight. This is an issue that has been very close to my heart for many years and an issue that certainly deserves well, very well informed discussion and debate. My own life as a sister to Cahal, who has Down syndrome, and my experience in the education sector, and indeed having worked with Special Olympics, has worked to consistently implement the core tenets of the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disability. And these core tenets represent the most fundamental rights of all persons, regardless of ability level. The right to he good health care services, the right to quality education, the right to an environment safe from exploitation and abuse, the right to work, the right to sport, but most of all, and most importantly, the right to be included as an equal member of society. We must also remember the families and the carers of those who have disabilities. They also have rights when we're discussing the rights of people with disabilities. Ten years have passed since this UN Convention was signed by the government. Ratification is absolutely now the next step. It is shameful that we are the only EU country remaining that have not yet ratified the Convention. And while this bill will move ratification one step closer, we must not rest at that. Those with disabilities deserve no less than full ratification. And Minister, while I do appreciate that you are very well-meaning, and I do absolutely acknowledge that for the past number of years that this has been a core issue for you, I think it is very concerning that this bill is only presenting part of the solution. However, myself and my party will not stand in the way of any progress, but I would like to ask you for a timeline in terms of seeking full ratification. And I un understand also that you have indicated that other amendments will come into play in relation to what is left out of this bill. And I think we need to be very clear when that's going to happen and how that's going to happen. I have to say also that I accept that governments alone cannot do all the necessary work to change communities. And while it is one thing for us to set a standard in law, it is quite another to set a standard in people's hearts. The true fulfilment of the Convention will only come when children and adults with disabilities are treated with dignity and justice, not just in writing, but also in daily life. Minister, it is my belief that Ireland's ratification of the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities by the Government can serve as a national call to action to all. And that's to our government agencies, to NGOs, to recreation and sport programmes, to public health agencies, to schools and to many more to mobilise all of our resources in a shared quest to provide a brighter and more secure Peter for all with disabilities in Ireland. Sometimes I think in this country we think of people with disabilities as only those with a physical disability, as those that we see in wheelchairs. And we're very conscious of providing access to buildings and indeed there's, I think we're to be commended in terms of budgets that are set aside to make sure that there is physical access. But we cannot forget about people with intellectual disability and all of the invisible barriers that they face day to day. People with intellectual ma disabilities matter, they count, and they deserve a chance just like you or me or any other person. There is an urgent need for individuals and communities across Ireland to become a strong advocate for the ratification of the UN Convention. When rights are defined only by political or judicial norms, they do very little to advance a cause whose barriers are social and cultural. So there is a big job for all of us outside this House as well as inside. The future of rights for people with disabilities requires a new positive message from us in which all of us own the rights agenda. Motivated citizens can make 
a huge difference. And we saw that in 2003 during the Special Olympic World Games, of which I was privileged to play a part. I had the honour of working with 160 host towns right across the island of Ireland and witnessed firsthand the lengths that people went to to ensure that their guests that were coming from 180 countries around the world had the very best opportunity to showcase their abilities and the legacy long lives on. For schools to change, it cannot just be governments embracing the principles of universal education. It must also be citizens demanding that all children are given the right to attend school. For employment conditions to change, it cannot just be governments embracing the principles of non-discrimination. It must also be business leaders and citizens advocating for workplaces that value the contributions to all. Ireland has the opportunity to ratify the Convention and in so doing, to show strong solidarity with all other EU member states that have already ratified the Convention and have begun implementation. We have a heightened obligation to ratify and implement the Convention. Every day, acts of inclusion have helped define our social fabric, where tolerance, acceptance, togetherness, helpfulness and advocacy have hopefully all become standard components of a past, present and future Ireland. There's a few key questions that I'd like to put to you, Minister. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask you to outline whether there has been formal structured consultation process with civil society and particularly with people with disabilities to inform this bill. Secondly, I would like to bring your attention again to Article 33.3 of the Convention, which sets out the requirement to involve people with a disability in the monitoring process. And I'd like to ask you to outline how people with the lived experience will be resourced and facilitated to play that crucial role. Thirdly, Minister, I'd like to ask you how the Bill will make legislative provisions to ensure that people with lived experience are the key constituents in monitoring the UN Convention in Ireland. I'd also like to ask you what legal advice your department has sought from the Attorney General in relation to reasonable accommodation and ratification. Um, the, uh, I, I also, I'd like to ask you too about just the crossover with the Epson Act, which was brought in particularly around the whole rights area, which has been mentioned earlier. And you know, we've already addressed that this is not a full ratification, um, and I'd just like to know your, your reservations in relation to that. My final question as such is in relation to Article 14b, which clearly states that people with disabilities should not be deprived of their liberty unlawfully or arbitrarily, and that any deprivation of liberty is in conformity with the law, and that the existence of a disability shall in no case justify deprivation of liberty. The absence of specific legislation on the deprivation of liberty as part of the bill is worrying. Given the seriousness of this equality and human rights issue, has the Minister engaged in any formal structured discussion with civil society organisations in relation to the deprivation of liberty? Um, and I would like to know when legislation will be developed in conjunction with persons with disabilities on this particular issue. I want to just take a moment to appreciate the cross-departmental approach that needs to happen right across the Cabinet because across the area of disability, obviously there are issues with education, issues with health, issues with uh, gaining significant and quality employment. And I know that you know, from, from my work on the Education Committee that there's lots of issues for people, particularly with intellectual disability, accessing quality education. Day after day, I certainly receive calls from parents who are very concerned about their children with autism, who are not able to access primary education. And then if they get into primary education, there's a huge issue with trying to access second level education. And it doesn't stop there. For example, CARE, who I know that, that you've met recently, they had an excellent programme ongoing with Maynooth University, 
where care were able to provide the personnel and the staff to ensure that some of their clients were able to go to Maynooth and participate in third level programmes. They weren't taking full modules but part modules and doing extremely well. And they were covering all of these costs but, the, but Maynooth University was not able to access any type of funding whatsoever from education. Now if we truly believe that everybody in this country has a right of access to education. That includes third level education and I accept it's an issue for the Minister for Education but I do think it's something that you should take up that in a situation where somebody with an intellectual disability or of course with a physical disability wishes to access and has that capability and has the support from their service provider then absolutely we should be encouraging and supporting that. I mentioned CARE earlier and they have an excellent supported employment service and this stretches through Kildare, West Wicklow and in, indeed into Carlo Leach and Offaly and to date they have 156 people in the paid job of their choice in the open labour market and the vast majority of these is in the private sector with notable exceptions. Kildare County Council, I, I'm really glad to say, uh, continues to be a fantastic supporter of the process with people employed both in our HQ in Aris Kildara and in library services around the county. And the local HSE have employed uh, somebody recently in their stores department in NACE. And I know that uh, you visited NACE Hospital recently and you had the opportunity, I think, to, to meet um, w some of the young people that are working there. And they, they've called their project Project Search. And this is essentially supporting young people with an intellectual disability to participate in a real and meaningful internship to prepare them for the world of work. And in fact, I'm working with them to try and find a module maybe that we could have here in Leinster House in relation to an internship programme working with Dáil deputies and senators. When a person leaves Project Search or from within care and um, they then try to find a meaningful job for these individuals and part of this is what CARE called job finding and that's endeavouring to match the people's skills, interests and dreams with what a particular employer might have to offer but there are barriers within the civil and public service and this is in the main because of policies and requirements that are in place and I think that um, I'd like to put it to you, Minister, that this is something that you could take up and maybe that we could work collectively on in relation to finding, if there are opportunities there in the public sector, I'm sure we should be able to find them in, in, in the public service as well. Um, and just before I hand over to my colleague too, I just want to say in conclusion, it's really important that we have this debate and it's, it's hugely important that we as a parliament as a nation and as global citizens seize this opportunity to ratify the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. And we have to do it with conviction, we have to do it with focus, for we know that a progressive Ireland starts when each of our citizens, regardless of their ability or disability, feels empowered to make a difference. And we must do so with resolve for the many challenges that will surely arise especially when support for our fellow citizens, for my brother, for your daughter, will be positioned against issues like public deficit, budget shortfalls, spending cuts and the like. And we must do this in memory of the pioneers also that came before us, pioneers that dreamt of a day when governments around the world would raise their voices in unison and mobilise to benefit all citizens with no division. And we have to confront these challenges optimistically and courageously, and I use the words of the Special Olympics athlete oath that inspires millions around the world and many in this country as to the power of the human spirit. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Gerv Mahagat.